Hi, Reno. <laughs> good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, morning, everybody. You all can hear us loud and clear, right? Boys and girls, can hear mm -hmm. us? Can, can, doctor. Can, uh, very good. So today we are pleased to have uh, Mr. Reno. He's a uh, well-known personal uh, in CLP examination. He used to, you know, uh, provide short notes for the students as well as um, he's also the co-moderator of uh, student council. So I myself had been receiving a lot of uh, helps from Mr. Roy Reno. So today we are going to invite Mr. Reno to discuss uh, evidence paper, okay, year 2022. So I hope uh, everybody has their papers in their hands now. Let's get started. Morning, morning, everyone. Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Chi. And yeah, thanks for everybody for attending this class this morning, although it's public holiday. Okay. Before that, um, before I start, can I have a brief uh, overview with all of you about the evidence? Can you guys see the screen I share? Can, can. No problem. Can Okay, because I'm not very good in using Zoom. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Let me open it up. Uh, sorry. Let me try. Yeah. Let me check this. Check. Make sure that the name is correct as well as the. Okay, the okay. and the check number. Okay. Just give me a moment. Uh. I think oh, some okay. should, should I mute uh, uh, the student? Uh, sorry. Can me move? Yeah, please, please, please. Okay, let me mute this. Uh. Okay, so you guys can see the screen, right? Uh, I'm showing one overview of evidence. Can you guys see? So um as my understanding, la, although some lawyer may not agree, la, to me, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven types of agreement, uh, sorry, evidence we can use in court. Number one is facts is issue and relevant facts. Uh, any volunteer want to try to explain what is facts in issue and relevant facts? It's okay. If no nobody answer, maybe I will ask Dr. Chi to help. <laughs> Hi, yo. Don't worry, you can try, then I, I can collect or you guys may sharing what is your thought and your understanding towards what is facts in issue and relevant facts. <clears throat> you want to give, give any, a try? Any good try. Eh? Otherwise, it will be on me only. La. Yeah. I try, I try, I try. Facts in issue uh, actually refer to direct evidence, number one. And then subsequently, it must be perceived by our fifth, five sense. La. That means you must see it, you must hear it, you must feel it, you must smell it. Then this is called direct evidence in the court or what we call as fact in issue. This evidence is very powerful, you know, because you see it yourself. It's not coming from any other inferences. Correct. Okay. <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, how about relevant facts? Anyone? Don't be shy. Otherwise, then Dr. Chi will be help to answer as well. well uh, I'm supposed to be your moderator today. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. So, like uh, Dr. Sir, Chi morning, explained. Sir. Mr. Ganesh. Yeah, Mr. Ganesh. Over to you. Sir, good morning, sir. Relevant facts mean to say that it can facts which are relevant to the facts in issue. Correct. 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 So, uh, you see, ah. Uh, like for example, we today we are talking about a murder case, murder. So the if the there's a evidence uh, is a book, but the book have the blood of the suspect or the blood of the 
uh, with him. So in that case, uh, the blood and the book is the relevant facts to this case. Because why? It can show who are the person may be present in this case. Uh, but on the other hand, if today we found uh, a knife, a knife with blood and with the DNA or with uh, fingerprint, then that one can be facts in issue. Why? Because that one direct explain who killed the victim. So this is relevant facts and facts in issue. Okay. Don't worry. Later when we do question, we will know whether you guys understand or not. Okay. The third one is admission and confessions. Um, very simple. When you admit you kill somebody, when you confess, you say I committed a crime, then this is kind of evidence. And fourth one is the opinion evidence. This one is more like, let's say, when we call Dr. Chi to testify in court, to giving his professional opinion, then this is opinion evidence. But please take note that this opinion evidence can go to non-expert and expert. What does it mean? Expert means whatever area involved foreign law, science and art, handwriting, fingerprint. So all this we call expert opinion. Non-expert, on the other hand, you can see number one also include handwriting. This handwriting can be your wife, your friend, or your sibling who can recognize your handwriting. They are expert as well, but it's not, and we, we call it non-expert. But as long as they can recognize your fingerprint, we would deem as a non-expert opinion as well. Or right of custom, for example, Chinese custom. We need to ask some Chinese go to court and explain what kind of custom we have. So he is a non-expert to explain. Okay, but this one rarely come out in SM, lah, so I don't intend to go into details. Lah. And then number fifth is similar facts evident. Uh, I'm not sure whether yesterday the student was here or not, uh, is here or not. Uh, similar facts means two incidents, two crimes committed by a same move of uh, com committing uh, of the offense. And both situations, the, the evidence is similar. For example, I not like to kill people with my photo. So in all situations, I use the same photo to kill people. So this is the similar facts evidence. Okay. But um, like I said, this one also rarely come out in the exam. Like, actually, it's not easy to answer as well. Like, uh, I don't think 2022, we have this kind of question. But if have, and if got chance, we can go into details. And then also character evidence, which means whether Reno is a good person or not, whether Reno committed uh, a, a crime before, bad character, good character. This character is a relevant evidence as well. But generally, generally, uh, character evidence is not admissible, generally. Why? Because this case is this case. Previous case is previous case. You cannot lump together. And then the last one is identification parade. So this is like, um, I'm not sure whether you guys watch any drama or movie before. It's like whenever a crime uh, committed, when the police arrested some person, then they will stand in front of the, the glass. Then you guys can see in the glass and then say, okay, this person, this person, I can recognize him. This process we call identification parade or short form we call ID parade. Okay. So once all these kind of evidence are, we, we see in the question, then all this kind of evidence actually is subject a rules we call best evidence rule. What is best evidence rule? Translate in the layman term means the best evidence. Let's say, if you say this person see him, this person must come. Let's say, if you say there is an agreement, the original document must come. So, let me go into details. Evidence can go to two category. One, oral evidence, which is the witness. Oh, sorry, Dr. Chi. Bro, bro, sorry, sorry. There are some students actually seeing me, you know. They are in the waiting room. So sorry. I yeah. see. I see. Actually, I tried to click, but I don't know how to. Can anyone you have to go to the wait, waiting room? It's always like that. Waiting room. And admit them, you know. Let me see. Uh, you go to the participants, and then you can see people are queuing. Are they? Wait, uh, because I don't know how to maximize the screen. Uh. It shows like that. I don't show you. Uh, sorry, I'm not very good at using this. Uh. Okay. 
Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Wow, quite yeah, a lot that, of students waiting. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. A lot of them are coming and actually texting me also. Can, can, can. It's okay. That's yeah, a little, little punishment to them being late. No, no, just kidding, just kidding. Hey, okay, I think, yeah, everybody's joining. Okay, so. Yes. Um, uh, sorry. Okay, um, like I say, evidence can go into two categories. One is oral evidence, which means a person who come to court to give evidence, we call oral evidence. And the second category is documentary evidence, which is whatever evidence is in paper. So we call documentary evidence. So. Like Dr. Chi mentioned, when the oral evidence is given by the person, the best evidence is the maker come to court. Where the maker don't come to court, we call it hearsay. Very, very simple example. Lah. For example, today I tell Dr. Chi, hey, do you know actually uh, Mr. A wife having a affair? Then Dr. Chi say, yes, I know. Then when Dr. Chi told and tell another person, hey, do you know Mr. A and Mr. Wife both also have an affair? This is why we don't recognize hearsay is because uh, you see the authenticity may change, the story may change. That's why we, we try to find the best person who is the maker who come to court, who know the first hand of the news, come to court and testify. But of course, we, are, we know it's not that easy every time uh, in all situations you ask the maker to come. So therefore we have an exception to hearsay. Okay, I, I just quickly go through. Uh. So the most often uh, exception to hearsay we use is section 32 and 33. Uh, I'm not sure whether you guys know or not. Uh, 32 is, uh, for example, a dying declaration, investigation by police, etc. And also common law registry, and then uh, documentary evidence for section 73A and 90A. All these are the exceptions to hearsay, okay? But don't worry, later we will go into detail in when we're discussing the question. And then documentary evidence. Uh, like I say, where the when the evidence is in documents, the best evidence is original. I think you can find the sections in 63, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Uh, Sixty-four. Okay, so pursuant to Section sixty-four Evidence Act, we are required to use primary evidence or, in layman terms, original. And then, unless you can show all the exceptions under Section sixty-five, then you can use the secondary evidence, which is photocopy or CTC copy, whatsoever, lah. Okay. Once all this evidence you got ready, then we will talk about burden of proof which means who has the burden to prove the, the maker and the document evidence, et cetera. And then also we involve presumption and then compen uh, this comparable, which is whether a witness who is child or who is a wife, who is a judge, whether they can come to court to give evidence or not, and then privilege, whether the conversation is protected by law or not, are they allowed to give evidence in court and then corroboration. So this is the basic overview of the evidence at uh, so let us go to ask your questions. Uh. Any questions, guys? I will take silent means no. Uh. <laughs> okay, so I believe everyone have read the questions. Uh. So can we straight away go to this A, credibility of hidden, hidden evidence. So we know uh, who is beaten in this case? Is a witness, is a co-accused, or he is um, accomplished? It means a person assisting uh, an accused to commit crime. Okay. So, uh, on the facts, uh, Bidon, yeah, he was initially jointly charged with pudding. So, which means uh, initially the charge is against both, both person, Pudding and Biden. But then, because Biden pleaded guilty and then also now turned into a prosecution witness. Uh, so, now he became the prosecution witness already. So, in this case, uh, when the question asks you the credibility of Biden's evidence, uh, 
which means can we trust this bidder whether bidder may tell a lie or not then in this case then we need to discuss about corroboration okay uh sorry maybe before we go into corroboration uh, we need to talk about relevancy as well why because like i mentioned type of evidence so this kind of evidence pattern evidence is what is a relevant fact one why because Biden evidence is mentioned about Putin and Zelly got into an argument. Ma. This one, uh, and also step Zelly at Biden House. Ma. This one can be facts in issue and also relevant facts. But before that, like I say, you cannot simply take an evidence to say this is relevant, this is an evidence. You must show relevancy or fact is, facts in issue first. So in this case, uh, Biden evidence should be, my opinion, uh, relevant under Section 10 which is things say or done by conspirator because they both commit the offense together, right? So it's relevant under section 10. Huh? So once they are relevant under section 10, when you look at the questions, uh, the question is asking credibility, which means can we trust him or not? So then only we go into the chapter we call corroboration, which is like I mentioned in the group yesterday, uh, certain person evidence are uh, we may need to be very careful because he may uh, telling a lie or may be telling the truth. We don't know. So if I may refer to section 133 and also illustration B, 114. So basically section 133 says that a conviction is not illegal because it proceeds on the uncorroborated evidence of an accomplice. Okay, which means the court actually is entitled to commit a person based on uncorroborated evidence of an accomplished. So it's fine. You can accept uh, beaten evidence without corroboration. However, on the other hand, uh, illustration B to 114, uh, this section says that where the court may presume accomplished is unworthy of credit unless its evidence is corroborated, which means uh, the court, on the other hand, may deem this person is not, uh, we cannot trust him. So, since we have two provisions, one say can, one say cannot, uh, so what should we do? Uh, I'm not sure whether you guys are referring to the same case or not, but my case is based on BAC case. Uh, so, if there's an ATC student, you guys have the similar case, you can use it. Uh. My case is this, no menza appendi. So, in this case, the court drew a distinction between accomplice playing active role in which a case his evidence should be corroborated. On the other hand, if the accomplice is playing passive rule, then the evidence may accept with a usual corroboration warning. What does it mean? Uh? Means, let's say today me and Dr. Chi, we go and commit crime, but all the time, sorry. Okay, but all the time, uh, I'm just listening to Dr. Chi instruction. He asked me to do this, do this, do this. So I'm playing a uh, passive role. So in that case, my evidence going against Dr. Chi, don't need corroboration, is fine. But if today I'm the one who instruct Dr. Chi to commit crime, I'm playing active role. So in that case, uh, my evidence against Dr. Chi uh, must be corroborated. Why we need to corroborate it? Uh, is because we need further evidence to support what I'm saying. Maybe it's lying, maybe it's true. This is why we need corroboration. So everybody understand? Okay, uh, like I say, uh, if I don't hear anything, I think you guys understand, uh, right? And then let me go to part B, relevant or seed evidence. So who is this S? Uh? S is a pathology who found blood and skin tissue from the deceased fingernail that match with putting DNA. So um, I have many students that will show away answer, which is the opinion evidence, right? I, I point out just now this part. Why? Because they say, hey, pandology, ma, DNA, ma, all this is science and art, right? But actually, if you look at the marks, right, it's eight marks only. So if you want to answer uh, section 45, which is the opinion evidence, uh, right, 45, uh, I don't think so, uh, my opinion. I personally don't think so. Uh. It's because, uh, it's only worth eight marks uh, if you want to discuss all the opinion evidence, uh, which is section 45 and this 290 case. Uh, what is this? Uh, let me just briefly tell you. Uh, 
So, how to determine whether an evidence is an opinion, uh, opinion evidence or not? Uh, we need to satisfy two requirements. Number one, this nature of evidence requires special skill. So, for example, pentology and then also uh, uh, fingerprint DNA. Yes, there is a special skill. Number two, the witness has acquired the necessary skill, or we call qualifications. Uh. But on the facts, uh, did the question tell you about the qualification of this S? What kind of qualification she has? If the question didn't tell you, uh, then in order to write this answer, you can just assuming, assuming. But for me, it doesn't sound very nice, uh, the answer, if assuming, assuming, unless you have no choice. Uh. So I don't think it's, you, you need to write this section for the five uh, requirement. Uh. But on the other hand, I would like to highlight this case to you guys, which is Wu Yi Chan. Wu Yi Chan, I, I, I don't know what I pronounce correctly or not. Have you guys heard about this case before? <clears throat> so basically, this case uh, is saying uh, we need to distinguish between facts and opinion. If the evidence is opinion, then you need to satisfy section 45. But if the, fa the evidence is a uh, facts, uh, then you don't need to satisfy section 45. Oh, so what is the difference between facts and opinion? So let's say today I ask you, one plus one equal to one. If we say, I think equal to two. So you think this is facts or opinion? Facts means uh, whoever you ask, they will give you the same answer. So this is facts. So when I examine this thing, it's a drug, it's a drug. Everybody check it's a drug. So this is facts. But opinions means uh, when you ask 10 person, uh, you may get, you may get uh, two or three different answers. This is opinion. So when we go back to these questions, like I say it's only eight marks. Uh, I don't think you need to write so much of section 45 and requirement, although the facts never tell you what is the qualification she has. Uh, okay. On the facts, they tell you they found a blood and skin tissue from the deceased fingernail that match with pudding DNA. I would think this is a fact. It's not an opinion because everybody, all pathology check will find the same thing. It's a DNA. It's a skin tissue. Nobody will tell you, no, this is not DNA. This is different people think uh, other than DNA. No one. So this should be a fact. So my opinion is the law. This answer should you should answer is Wu Yi Chang to say that since the DNA uh, they found in the deceased fingernail is a fact, therefore they are not required to satisfy uh, section 45 requirement. However, this X evidence is relevant under section nine because it's to explain and facts in issue or relevant fact. So what kind of facts in issue or what kind of relevant facts? So uh, can explain that if uh, Pudding never uh, committed murder or never done something on uh, the deceased, then how can the deceased fingernail can found your DNA? So you need to explain. So this re uh, evidence is relevant under section 9. But we don't need to... Uh, sorry. It's relevant under section 9. Then in order to bring in this evidence, this pentalogy S must come to court to give evidence because of the best evidence rule. That's it. So this is good enough for your eight marks ready. Understand? Okay. Okay, then I proceed. Huh? Let, let, let me know when you if you guys think it's too fast. Huh? Okay. As I said, because I cannot hear you guys, so I, I don't know uh, whether this is fast or slow. Huh? Okay. So yeah, so a student asked about uh, she's a pathologist. So does her this uh, I mean status, uh, status of work or profession really matter here? I don't think so. Like I said, if they really want you to discuss about the qualification or whether she is a pentology or what, uh, they are supposed to give you the facts to say, oh, I study how many years, you know, I have practicing what, I have done what, my experience what. I think you guys can find a similar question in the passive question. They will give you the facts that. The, uh, how they obtain the qualification. But in this case, <laughs> certainly there is no, uh, we, we cannot see the facts here, right? Okay. Oh, so basically they can ask in the question, oh, the chat box. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks, thanks, Dr. Chi. Like I say, I'm old man, so I'm not very really good at using all this. 
Okay, but thanks for highlighting. If I miss out any question, please let me know. Huh? Okay, let us proceed to C, which is Zeli uh, informed Inspector Boris that wounding was the cause of his injury. Zeli died four hours later. So, can, can I? Actually, I like to have the election, lah, but nobody wants to answer me. Okay. Uh, for me, I think it's quite clear this is dying declaration. Lah. Or alternatively, yeah, uh, we can admit under section 32 sub 1i or j. Why? Leh? Because uh, like I said, best evidence is the maker come to court. So in this case, the maker is Zeli. Zeli passed away, so Zeli couldn't come to court. So we need to apply the exception to hearsay. So what kind of exception can be used in this case? Uh? So number one is section 32, A, dying declaration. Why? Because number one, the maker must be there, satisfied, right? Number two, the clause of the maker that come into question, satisfies also, right? Because he was killed by somebody, ma. And then number three, regardless whether the maker is under expectation of that or not. So this one, why they have this requirement, uh, uh, just want to highlight to you, uh, because in UK, uh, the dying declaration is only admissible where the maker feel that she or he or she is going to die. Before he or she die, they make a statement. They say, hey, I worry, uh, I go to my house, my friend's house, uh, I may not come back alive, you know. Uh, this statement can be admissible under declaration, dying declaration for UK law. But for Malaysia law, we don't have such requirement. As long as you die later on, doesn't matter. Can be four days, can be one day early, it's fine, right? So, my personal opinion, I think dying declaration definitely can use, okay? And then, and other sections we can use is section 32 sub 1i, cost of investigation. Why? Uh, why? Uh? Because you look at the mark, 10 bucks. Eh? Like I say, if 10 marks are, we are expect to write maybe one page, one page of the answer. So I think you guys should write two exceptions. Lah. So 32 sub 1i, the statement was made in the course of an investigation. I think also satisfied, right? Why? Because for Inspector Boris on arriving the scene and found Zeli alive and sent to hospital. So Zeli informed Boris. Why in Inspector Boris was there? Because investigation, no? So we are satisfied this requirement. And also, shall only apply to criminal. This is certainly a criminal proceeding as well, right? So I think all requirements are satisfied. So we can use section 32 sub 1 A and I or J, okay? Let me see, uh, is there any questions? Uh? I'm not very good in multitasking because I'm- Can, can, can. I will read for you. I see, thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, uh. Can I charge my computer? I think I'm running out of battery. Give me okay, a moment, yeah. Yeah. okay, so let us go back to, so I think question one is that's about it. Lah. So if we don't see, don't hear any voice, There's, we don't see any question, we yeah, assume there, there, everything. There is okay. one, there is one, actually, oh, there is okay. one, but some Cases do not allow the dying declaration to be so, so, so remote. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like I said, it depends uh what I understand uh, based on the case law I have. Lah, but of course, if I'm not mistaken, it's not Malaysia case law. Uh, even nine months before a murder, oh sorry, this is held inadmissible. This is a night before is admissible, a month is inadmissible. But our question actually is just like four hours later, man, right? Four hours, I think, is okay. Lah. It's not so remote. Lah. If you say like a few months, maybe we cannot. Lah. Right? This uh, student called Keith Ten. Yeah. Okay. And let me proceed. Lah. 2A, explain the best evidence you should cite case law and provide example in aid of your explanation. So this best evidence is what I explained in my overview just now. Lah. Like I say, best evidence can go into two categories. Number one, uh, oral evidence. So best evidence for oral evidence is that 
you must uh, ask the maker to come. If the number two is documentary, we must use primary evidence or original evidence we call. Okay, I saw a question, so let me answer it first. Huh? What about section 32 I and J? Because the recent case, the court held that both sections should have disjunctive reading. Okay, thank you. Uh, like you say, should be disjunctive reading. Ma. So that's why I only discuss I is good enough already. Disjunctive means uh, you don't need to satisfy both I and J. You are only required to satisfy one of them. So which means if I satisfy I, which is statement was made in the course of investigation and only applies to criminal proceeding, uh, proceeding then okay, we can use section 32 sub 1I enough already. You don't need to satisfy 30, 32 sub 1J. But even though you want, even though you want to uh, discuss to say uh, I and J is conjunctively, uh, also no problem. Why? Uh, because this, the requirement under 32 sub 1J is only the statement was made by a police officer. Uh, but on the facts, the statement and also the investigation was done by police, right? Investigation also done by police. Uh, discharging the duty also done by police. Uh. So I don't see an issue whether this is read conjunctively or disjunctively. Uh, since this student mentioned, uh, maybe let me highlight to you guys uh, what is the effect where I and J read conjunctively and disjunctively. If the court say I and J must be read conjunctively, uh, it means uh, we can only accept investigation done by police. It's admissible, although maker doesn't come. But if the court say I and J must read disjunctively, uh, it means investigation is admissible already, although maker doesn't come. J, as long as it's done by uh, the duty of the police, then this statement is admissible already. The, police, uh, the maker doesn't need to come. So what is the difference? Read conjunctively and disjunctively. Conjunctively means must be done by police investigation. Disjunctively means whoever done investigation is invisible under 32 sub 1. So for example, private investigator. Private investigator done something investigation, the maker doesn't come, is invisible under section 32 sub 1. Yeah, this is the difference. Right, right. Let me see. Uh, so I don't know you are typing or what, but I believe I have answered your questions. Uh. Hey, so let us go back to this question 2A. Yeah, I saw. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So 2A, best evidence. So you guys need to explain what is best evidence rule means. So best evidence means the best evidence of, like I said. Okay, in this case, uh, I can also share with you guys. Uh, you guys may have the problem to say you don't know how to frame a sentence, right? So uh, I will always advise you can, if you can copy and paste the statute, lah, you can copy and paste the statute and then use your own wording to explain. So what does it mean? So like, for example, the section 32 sub 1 I and J. So in order to look your answer very long, you can copy and paste I and J. Later on, only you use your own wording to explain what does it mean. Then you see, you got two paragraphs already, isn't it? One, you copy and paste. Number two, you explain uh, what is your understanding towards these sections. This is the, the, the tips uh, how you guys uh, show that your answer is longer. Uh, okay. So back to this best evidence. Uh, for the oral evidence, uh, where tells you we must ask the maker to come. Uh, based on my memory, I don't think there is uh, any written statute to say uh, you must ask the maker to come. But I know there's a case law called Supermanium, right? So, sorry? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are, are you guys talking to me or what? Okay. So let me continue. Uh, let me mute you guys first. Uh. So, um, best evidence rule. For oral evidence, uh, the law says you must ask the maker to come is the case called PP versus Supermanium. So in this case, uh, I think it's an interesting case. Uh. Basically, this Supermanium was uh, arrested and charged in criminal court. So when the court asked him why you want to become a terrorist, so his answer was that I was forced by a terrorist. 
because they say they will kill my family. So the court said, how to prove your family uh, was kidnapped by the terrorists and you are forced by the uh, terrorists. So basically the court are saying that, best evidence who ma, you must ask the terrorists to come to court and prove that, yes, I, I force you, I ask you to become terrorists. But you guys know it's impossible, right? The terrorists will never come to court and say, yes, I force him. So it becomes that uh, they don't accept this Supermanian argument to say he, he were forced by terrorists. Okay. So at the end, uh, of course, that time is not a Malaysia law yet. La. It's a Privy Council case. La. At the end, they accepted the argument to say, uh, yeah, he showing this statement is not to show the truth, but it's to support that he he was forced to become a terrorist. Of course, this part is a bit complicated. It's because of the UK law. If whoever study UK law, evidence law, you would understand. UK exception to hearsay is that uh, you must show, you tender this evidence is for the truth. But in Malaysia, we don't have this requirement. So I would say it's a different position. Uh. In order not to confuse you guys, I don't want to go into detail. But basically, uh, what I'm trying to say is for oral evidence, who tell you the maker must come to court is super money. On the other hand, documentary evidence. Who tell you we must use uh, the, the, the what we call original evidence or primary evidence is section 64. If I may, you guys can flick to section 64. Uh. Okay. So section 64 says that document must be proven by primary evidence except in the case herein after mentioned. So it actually clearly says that uh, you must use primary evidence. So I don't know you guys, let me further explain uh, what is primary evidence. Uh. Let us let, look at section 62. So primary evidence means the document itself produced for inspection of the court. So which means you must bring the original for the court to inspect and check. So and another interesting case, uh, explanation tree, can we look at explanation tree? A document produced by a computer is primary evidence. So I think this one is very uh, clear la, to show that whatever passive question you see, they say it's a WhatsApp message la, or it's a computer. La. Actually, it's admissible under 62 explanation tree and also section 98. It's okay. Later, we will see the question. Okay. So for 10 marks, I think after you explain what is best evidence rule, what is oral evidence, exception and also documentary uh, general and also exceptions uh, which is 64 and 65 should be good enough for you to get your hand marks uh, okay i think let us have this habit uh, every time when we explain one question then i will look at the comment comment session see anybody got any questions uh, if no then we will just continue uh. okay number two uh two b Explain the parallel evidence rule. You should cite the case law and provide example in aid of your explanation. Okay, before that, uh, I would like to share my personal opinion to you guys. Uh. I will always try not to write essay question. Try, uh, but of course not saying to avoid. Uh. The reason is very simple. Because uh, in order to answer uh, an essay question, uh, you need to have a uh, more than basic understanding to one question. For example, 2A. If you don't un really understand what is best evidence rule, if you don't really know what is the rule says we must use best evidence rule, uh, then I think it's very difficult for you to answer. And some more, uh, when they put in essay questions, uh, actually the requirement is a way higher than problem question because they, they want a very comprehensive answer for that. So if can, we try to avoid essay questions. Uh. But for lecture purpose, don't worry, I can teach you. Uh. Okay. So what is parallel evidence? Parallel evidence, uh, if put in layman terms, uh, means where there is a written agreement, the court will believe only the contents of the written evidence, written agreement, not the oral part. So this is called parallel evidence. Actually, very simple. Uh. If today, me and Dr. Chi have a contract. He asked, he invited me to, to give a, the, a lecture for CLP class. He said he will pay me 10 ringgit. Let's say in the agreement, we say 10 ringgit. Lah. Okay, I'm so cheap. Okay. Then later on, Dr. Chi orally agreed. Actually, I will buy a bungalow for you also. Okay, I hope it's true. Lah. Later on, ah, 
Dr. Chi never honor his promise, never give me a bungalow. When we go to court, the court certainly will only believe and trust the written agreement, which is 10 ringgit. They don't believe the oral agreement. The reason also very simple, ma, because they don't want to confuse ma, and also waste your time. Ma. Uh, why? When you say you got written later, you got older later, you got grandmother's story, isn't it like endless of argument? So it will be best we just focus on written agreement first. Unless, uh, unless uh, the exception is section 92, which is where you need to prove the situation section 92A until F, either one, either one. But whoever very familiar with the general paper, I think you guys will only study section 92B and 92C. So what is 92B, which is separate oral agreement, which is not inconsistent with the main agreement. So use the same example I mentioned just now. Dr. Chi said he will give me 10 ringgit and also orally agreed to give me a bungalow. So this is inconsistent, right? Why? Because my fee is only 10. If later on, Ola say it's a bungalow, these two is inconsistent, then cannot. But on the other hand, if Dr. Chi say agreement will pay me 10, but then orally say will belanja me makan, okay, this is two different things, then I can enforce because these two agreement is not inconsistent. So the oral agreement can be acceptable. Okay. Okay. I think I saw a question, but uh, yeah. Uh, maybe later I explain again. Ah, let us continue first. Ah. Then 92C. Separate oral agreement constituting a condition precedent. This one, if a person who's familiar with the, what we call a general paper, ah, then you guys will understand about Tancho uh, Moto. Why? Uh? Because con uh, Section 92C means uh, I enter this contract is because you orally agree something. Why? Uh? In that case, uh, the Tancho Moto, uh, the Australian guy say I want to buy a, a car who can import it to Australia. So the salesman say, can, 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 no problem, no problem. You know, agent say everything okay. Uh. But at the end, cannot. So at the end, the order part, which is to say, okay, everything can. This part uh, is admissible, although it's not stated in the written agreement. Uh, it's admissible. Why? Because uh, the Australian guy is able to prove the reason I buy this car is because you promised this condition precedent. The condition I buy this car. So become section 92C means that uh, oral evidence is only admissible where I enter this written agreement is because of your oral promise. So, for example, Dr. Chi said, Reno, you come and uh, give lecture to this CRP, I buy you a bungalow. Although it's an oral agreement, but because I come and teach, it's because of this oral agreement. Uh. So, although it's not stated, although it's oral, but it's still admissible. Now, this is what happened. Uh. But Dr. Chi, don't worry, I won't sue you. Uh. Okay, so... This is what we call parallel evidence. So in order to get these 15 marks, uh, like I mentioned in the group, uh, you need to answer a big, maybe one page and half or two page, which means you need to answer all section 92A until section 92F. But then honestly, honestly speaking, uh, I'm not familiar with uh, other than B and C. Uh, I'm only familiar with B and C. Uh. So A until F, Actually, I'm not very familiar. Lah. But if you guys want, I suggest you guys can go and read uh, BAC book lah, because BAC book, they have written out the situation. And also, actually, if you return, refer to section 92, the, the illustration uh, be bottom, uh, below, uh, they do give you the situation and example, what does it mean for section 92? Okay? But against like my policy, right now policy is we don't do essay questions. Lah. Okay? So, hope you guys don't mind. Let us proceed. Lah. Okay, so I think uh, Dr. Chi has explained to this uh, Lee about best evidence already. Uh. So let us continue. Okay, so for this question number three, uh, is talk about the politician and then defamation. I think it does happen in our real life. Uh. And I can show you, you guys, this is actually uh, our prime minister. Who is that? Uh? Uh, An Anwar Ibrahim case. I mean, there is a case that also mentioned about the same thing. La. So basically, this question is copied from, from An Anwar, one of the Anwar cases. But now, I, 
I will first teach you guys how to answer based on the syllabus we know. Later on, only I tell you how to answer based on the latest case law, which is the, the, the Anhua case. So, A, the burden and standard of proof that each party has to be charged at their trial. So, the burden and standard. So, this is silver, right? So, silver, the burden is all from plaintiff. And then, the sorry, the burden is from plaintiff. And then, the standard of proof in silver case is balance of probability. On the other hand, if this is criminal, criminal, the burden start from prosecution or PP. And the standard is beyond reasonable doubt. I believe everybody know. Lah. I assume everybody know. Lah. So each of them, so who are them? On this case, lah, who is the plaintiff? Lah, which is our friend Ram, institute a civil action. So let us talk about Ram first. Lah, because this question worth like 15 marks, right? So let, let's say we separate into Ram, burden and standard of proof. And also we separate in uh, John, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, John as a defendant, uh, burden and standard of proof. Then each party, you need to write 7.5 marks for their part. Lah. So wrong as a plaintiff, 101 generally say plaintiff or the prosecution has the burden to prove their case. 101, I think no problem. Lah. Or if any student want to show examiner, they know a lot of things, you can write 102 as well. So, which means 101 and 102 says the plaintiff has the burden to prove. To prove what? On the case, uh, on the facts, is a defamation. So, what is the requirement for defamation? Number one, there is a defamatory statement. What is the defamatory statement? This one. Ran has been called habiting with and keeping his mistress. Or, I don't know how to pronounce, but I know what this means. <laughs> Two women with whom he had children. Okay. So this is number one, no? defamatory statement. Number two, make this statement to public, which means more than one person. Nah. So I believe it is because they post in, uh, they, they, they say it in the campaign. And number three, this statement is direct to the person, which is Ron. So I believe all these uh, requirements are satisfied. Therefore, Kwaima facially, there is a defamation case for Ron against John. So what is the standard of proof? which is uh, balance of probability. So finish 7.5, easy, right? I think this question must do, you know, burden of proof. Every year they will come out one. And uh, I think every year, uh, most the same, lah, the way they ask, okay? Then we go to defendant part, which is John. John says that he plead, he defends, uh, he hear the rumor circulating in the committee. Okay, this is number one. And also this, number two, justification and qualified privilege. So what does it mean? Huh? It means that I am explaining something. I am saying this, but I am, I am immune by suing by somebody. It means uh, qualified privilege. Lah. I think why he say that is because uh, he is a YB. Ma. Actually, YB do enjoy certain right of a privilege. So I don't know whether you guys know or not. Uh. Whatever they say in the parliament hall, uh, actually they cannot sue for defamation one because they have the privilege there. They have the immunity there. So I think he's trying to say this. Uh. So back to John. Uh, when John says justification, qualified privilege, and also hear it from rumors, uh, all these three things, uh, he must prove it as well. Uh. He cannot simply just say, uh, you know, say, yeah, I'm just saying for fun. Yeah, I just want to say cannot. When you say it, then you must prove it. This is under section 103. Yeah. I didn't put in the simple layman terms. Uh, 103 means uh, you say it, you prove it. For example, today I say, Dr. Chi owe me 10 ringgit. When I say that, uh, then I must prove it. When I sue him, I must prove it, 101. But when I say something, then what? I, I must pay it. So similarly, when John says justification, Qualified privilege and also rumors are uh, then he must prove uh, this is rumors, uh, this is justification. Uh, so it's under 103. And proof until what standard is balance of probability. Uh, this is all standard for civil procedure. Uh, civil procedure all is balance of probability. Uh, so if you want to prolong your sentence, then you you can write this case, uh, this UK case, standing justice. Say what? Okay. Okay, I see one question. Do we need to discuss 104? Okay, thank you for your asking this. Huh? 
I think the more you guys we can we can uh, discuss more perspective. Okay, one zero four. I don't think so because uh, if you look at one zero four, uh, I personally name it P condition. What does it mean? Uh? means when you want to use an exception or apply certain sections, uh, then the burden is on you. How to say? Uh, let's say today I say this is uh, this is uh, printed out by computer and visible under section section 90 capital A. So for me, in order to use section 98, the burden is on me. Who say so? 104 say so. So you can see uh, the illustration also giving the same example. Where A wishes to prove dying declaration by B, A must prove B die. Uh, which means when you want to apply certain sections, uh, the burden is on you. So in order for you to say you want to use 104, uh, I don't see they mentioned about any uh, sections or mention about any, uh, unless, uh, unless uh, they give you a sections for this justification and qualify privilege, they say it's under what law. Then because of they say it's under what law, uh, then you can use section 104. Okay, wait. Uh, okay, I'm sharing the screen. Yes, for plaintiff is section 101. Okay, I saw one student is asking about legal and evidential burden. Okay, thanks for asking. This one also, I always tell my student one. Actually, uh, the legal burden and evidential burden is only important when you are answering essay question. Why? Uh, why? Uh? Let's say uh, today, our, our John say, no, I say this is sumo. I say this is justification. So when the court say, Legal or evidential burden? No, ma. No, right. I mean, it won't happen because you say you must prove it. This the so-called legal and evidential burden is only important is where the essay question asks you this burden is the real burden or is not a real burden. What does it mean? Ah? legal burden must means when you say it, you must prove it. If you cannot prove it, then you are lying. Legal burden is a must. You must do it. But on the other hand, evidential burden means uh, you say it also can already. Lah. I ask you, where are you? Are you murder somebody? They say, no, the other day I'm at home. Just say, just say okay, already. you don't need to prove it. This is so-called evidential burden. So that's why I call it real burden or not a real burden. But imagine now you are advising a party burden and standard of proof. Uh. Can you just simply say, yes, justification and get 7.5 mark, please give me. Cannot, right? So that's why I say for essay question, actually, you don't need to care about whether this is legal or evidential because this is not important. It's more like a academic discussion, whether what kind of burden, to what extent I need to prove something like that, legal and evidential. So you will never see legal and evidential uh, uh, question happen in the proper question for you to answer. I, I don't think so. But of course, I stand to be corrected uh, by our Dr. Chi. Okay. Thank you. Okay, but yeah, yeah. Uh, please share share with us your your understanding. I, I don't think I think so. I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> you are more because... expert. You are more expert. No lah, no lah. We are we are all <laughs> seriously. We are all sharing today. So I saw another question they asked, how to differentiate section one zero three and one zero four. Okay, one zero three and one zero four. Like I say, if I put in the very very layman terms, ah, one zero three means you say you prove it. 104 means you want to apply, you prove it. I give you a scenario. I say I'm gay, so I need to prove I'm gay. This is 103. 104 means I say I want to use this photo. I must prove I have a photo. If you understand, it put in the very simple way. So if you look at the illustration, very simple. Right? Yeah. 103. Yeah. If B wishes the court to believe at the time in question, he was elsewhere, he must prove it. Defense or alibi. You must prove where are you? When you say you are not here, then where are you? Okay, this is 103 when you say something. 104, when A wishes to prove that dying declaration by B, A must prove B died. So which means in order to use that dying declaration, then you must prove he died. If he didn't die, then how to prove dying declaration, right? Okay, so shall we? Shall we? So I think A actually is quite simple because A really, really is uh, every year you must ask one. Yeah. Again. Hello. Okay, I asked, I saw another question. Uh, let me see. Uh. Oh, okay. Dr. G, you answered already. Uh. 
Oh, no, sorry. Angela, Angeline. Can we argue that it is hearsay because he is trying to adduce that it is true for the matter state or the matter stated? Okay. I think yes, but the one is for puppy. Eh? Puppy. Admissibility of John evidence that he has heard rumors in the committee. So thanks for highlighting. Rumors is a hearsay, it's a very good hearsay. Why? Uh? This is very simple, ma. I ask you, who tell you? My auntie tell you. So when you ask your auntie, your auntie say, I heard somebody say. So this somebody, 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 uh, we never know who is the somebody. So in this case, very simple. General is what? Best evidence. Best evidence means maker must come. Who is the maker? The, the so-called say the rumors must come. If cannot come, it's a hearsay. So what happened is a hearsay? Inadmissible. Who says so? Supermarine says so. That's it. Unless you can apply any exception to it. So 10 marks, I think, okay, okay. Lah. Right? Then, 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 then. Okay, since we end this thing already, let me share with you about our Dato Sri Anhua case. So basically, in this case, uh, same thing happened. Yeah. The plaintiff sued the defendant for defamation based on certain words that were allegedly spoken by the defendant during the political speech, which he made in the course of election campaign. Right? See? Similar, right? Let me highlight. The imputed words were past mine TFP equal gili. TFP mine past equal kanan. Angwa mine dua dua equal pelakan. Okay, don't laugh. Okay. So, now when we talk about the burden, huh, let's see what our court say. Huh? But in this case, basically the court differentiate to say there's a difference between criminal and civil, but I personally don't think it's very relevant here. And also they mentioned about evidential burden, but I don't think it's relevant here as well. Like I said, evidential means uh, I just mentioned will do. I just say I was somewhere will do. I just say this is rumors will do. No, 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 no. You cannot say that. Uh, but for this case, actually, it's not that important. Uh. I will share in the group. Uh. So whoever who read, who find any relevant sentence, uh, please share in the group. Uh. But I will share this in the group. But I, I mean, this case is actually copied from, 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 from this case. The, uh, when this question is copied from this case. But I don't see the importance to say that you cannot answer this question without reading this case. Uh. Okay? Let me share in the book. Uh... Okay. So let us continue, shall we? Okay, I saw a lot of questions now. Let me see. Can we argue that there is no relevancy since we never told whether the source is reliable or not? Okay, can, but I think it's not for this question because this question is clearly asked you. Uh, uh, sorry, by the way, to answer Keith 10, uh, because you said there's no relevancy. Ma. I think you can, but it's not for this question because this question is clearly asking you about admissibility. What does it mean? Means can we can or cannot take this evidence? So it, it's not about relevancy. If they want you to talk about relevancy, uh, the wording should be relevant, uh, credibility. When admissibility is purely on admissibility, can or cannot. If can, how? Person come, original or secondhand, okay? So for puppy, it's not about bad character evidence. No, I don't think so. Because like I said, character evidence is that I am a bad guy. I committed the offense. But then in this case, they are asking you, can admit or cannot admit? So it's not relevant, okay? So do we have to mention about bad character? No, don't need. For part B, we should discuss about hearsay only and which exception apply. Um, honestly, I try to find any case law. I don't see any case law to say they can admit rumors. Uh, and at the end, most of the case I can find, uh, they all say you cannot use rumors because rumor is a hearsay. So I don't think any exception can apply. Should we talk about section 55 for part B? Section 55, let me see what is section 55. Uh. Character, everything damage. Um, maybe can, but it's not relevant as well, like I said, because the question is asking admissibility. is not relevancy, okay? Okay, so let us continue. Mm, okay, question four is an interesting one. 
So I will assume everybody have read the questions. Huh? Uh, A, the admissibility, admissibility of any photograph if she is not called as a witness. See, admissibility means don't talk about relevancy, don't talk about whatsoever. We just talk about admissibility. Can muscle or cannot muscle? If can, which law? So, like I point out just now, photograph uh, can be admissible under section 90A because it's printed out by computer, right? I, I believe everybody will agree camera is a computer, right? So it's admissible under section 90A. So what is the requirement for section 90A? Let me show you. Uh. So for section 90A, the number one section, uh, number one requirement is produced by computer. Like I said, I don't think every uh, anyone will disagree that camera is a computer. So number one, satisfied. Number two, in the course of ordinary use. So how to prove whether it's in the course of ordinary use or not? Two way, pursuant to my case. Uh, you can use other case, uh, by the way. Number one, produce a certificate. So this certificate is signed by a person who either before or after the production of the document is responsible for the management. Okay, let me say all the requirements first, then I explain one by one. Huh? And then number two, to prove whether it's in the ordinary use or not, it's by oral evidence, which is ask the maker who come to court. How to say, huh? for example, today, Dr. Chi control this computer, so I can talk about this class. So when we go to court, huh, the court asks me, hey, right now, when you're teaching, you printed out some, some sample answer, right? I said, yes. So I said, uh, my, my lord, can I produce under my sample answer uh, admissible under section 98? The court said, uh, Mr. Reynolds, is it produced by computer? I say, yes. Okay, produced by computer. Then uh, the, the, the judge will ask me, Mr. Reynolds, is it in the course of ordinary use? Then I say, uh, my lord, I don't understand what does it mean in the ordinary use. Then the lord will say, either you produce a certificate signed by a person in charge of the computer. Who is this? Dr. Chi. And this thing very important, uh, signed by the certificate can be either before or after. Uh, means, uh, let's say today is Mr. Chi, later on is Dr. Chi wife. So Dr. Chi wife is after control the computer. Uh, she can sign this certificate as well. So the law allowed, okay? But so far, I never see the question asked so complicated like this, uh, but I just highlight to you, uh, can be either and after. Uh. And alternatively, the judge also tell me, Mr. Reynolds, or you can ask Dr. Chi and come to court and give evidence. That's it. Which means, when we both go back to the questions, uh, this photograph uh, is produced by camera. Uh, who is the person who controls this camera? Is any man. So either any come to court to give oral evidence, however, cannot. Uh, because the question say, ma, she's not called as evidence, ma, uh, witness, ma, sorry. Then you ask any to sign a certificate. Ta -da, ta -da. Right, right. I, I think it's quite simple. La. I don't know how you guys feel. La. It's okay. Whenever there's a question, people will ask, okay? So, yeah. Actually, I, actually I'm more preferable. People can open and I see the face. La, but too many people, I cannot see the face also. La. Okay, I saw somebody want to admit. I admit them into this room. Okay. So I don't see any question, then I proceed. Rosa, to, can refer to her statement to the police at the trial, which means, uh, let me bring you guys back to the questions. Uh, where is Rosa? Uh, Rosa witnessed the entire incident. Rosa also give. Uh, Rosa at the trial. Rosa cannot recall the event of the incident and wishes to refer her statement. Uh, let me mute somebody. Uh, mute, mute. Mute. Okay, so which means Rosa made a statement before trial when the incident happened. After the incident, when she go to court, then she cannot remember already. So when she cannot remember, the question asks you whether she can refer to her statement or not. Actually, the answer is yes. I don't know you guys know about this case or not. Let me highlight the case to you. Ah. The... This case, if I'm not mistaken, is something called Bumi. Wait, ah. 
I'm old, my laptop also getting old. That's why the response is slow. Uh. Give me a moment. Uh. But anyway, while we are waiting, let me answer the questions. Uh. So one student asked, photograph is a document under section three. Can we connect it to section 90A? Why not? Why not? Uh, actually, you say whether they can connect to section 98 or not, I am not very sure. Let me look at it later. But thanks for highlighting because uh, I would like to share also, uh, actually, this one uh, not only admissible under section 98, uh, you can admissible under section 62 explanation tree. Can we go to 62 explanation tree? Yeah. I see a few person, I can see the face, uh, so I see. Okay, I think they found right. I look at their face. So section 90, section 62, sorry, I mentioned 62, right? Section 62 explanation tree says that a document produced by a computer is a primary evidence, which means we can print out the photograph and then say this is documentary evidence, then this is admissible because this is primary evidence. So is it complicated? Everyone can understand? Yeah, why out? Thanks, thanks for highlighting. The, the law is moving, but I still waiting my computer to open it. Wait, uh, wait, uh, wait. Uh. Oh, sorry, I haven't opened it yet. Okay. Mumi. So thanks for this uh, student YS highlight YR, sorry. Highlighting, uh, in order to refresh the, the statement you make prior to trial, uh, the case we can refer is Mumi. So the first condition is that the writing by which the memory of a winner is to be refreshed must have been made by the winners. So in layman terms, she, he or she must make this statement. Then only you can refer, number one. Okay, number two. The writing was made at the time of the transaction concerning which he is questioned, which means when the incident happened, the police asked him, then he made at the time, then only you can admit. This is number two. Number three, a witness cannot refresh his memory as of right, which means this right to refresh is not automatic. You must ask the court. So this is all the three requirements for me to refresh the memory. Okay, this is for our making mark. Sorry, you guys want to copy, is it? Nah. Okay, I saw questions are 159 correction. Let me see. Uh, actually, I also forgot already. Yes, it's 159. Thanks for highlighting. Which means for this refreshing memory, the section is 159. The case is for me. Okay. Okay, okay. Then let us continue. Admissibility of account previous evidence given at the criminal proceeding. All right, this one um, for me is interesting now because my, my, my own student, many they answer wrongly. Now. So I don't know about you guys, but this one certainly is section 33. Now. Right, right. Why? Because uh, can we go to section 33? So section 33 says, relevancy of certain evidence for proving in subsequent proceeding, the true of facts there in stated, which means uh, when you have given the evidence uh, in uh, case number one, but then for case number two, it's the same thing you want to say, uh, but then you are not free on that day. Then they can use the, your, your evidence in court number one for court number two. So this is section 33. So this question actually is section 33. Right. I, I think it's quite simple. La. Sorry. Oh, I think it's very simple. La. I mean, like very straightforward. La. Not to say you cannot find the answer at all. La. But I think once I point out is which sections, then should be quite easy. La. Right, right, right. So of course, the requirement for section 33 you need to discuss is that Evidence given by witness in judicial precedent. So I think on the facts given in the criminal proceeding. Uh, so that one is okay. Uh. And unavailability, which means this witness must prove why you cannot come to court number two. You must show that uh, you die already, you are incapable of giving evidence, 
you are kicked out by way or by uh, adverse party, which means your opponent stop you, ask you don't come to court, etc. This one is either one, uh, by the way, unavailability is either one. Uh, cannot be you die, you also cannot get evidence. Your, your, they also torture your, your body uh, when you die also. No, uh, it's either one. Uh. Then all this must satisfy as well, which means the proceeding was between the same party. So on the facts, whether they are same party or not, then you guys need to discuss all. And then number two, the adverse party in the first proceeding had the right to opportunity to cross-examine. So what does it mean? Uh? I think many people don't know what is examination in chief, what is cross-examination, what is re-examination. Okay, this one I may need our Dr. Chi for help. Okay, imagine today Renault is a plaintiff, Dr. Chi is a defendant. So Renault will start Renault examination in chief. What is this? Renault will say, uh, witness A, did you see Dr. Chi on the other day? So Reno asked Reno witness, this is examination in chief. Huh? So Reno sit down. Then it's Dr. Chi turn. So Dr. Chi will ask Reno witness, this is cross examination. Okay. Then Dr. Chi sit down. Then Reno ask again, this is re examination. So which means in one session, sir, when my witness come, I can do examination in chief. My opponent can do cross-examination. I can do another round called re-examination. Once my case calls, Dr. Chi turns. So Dr. Chi will call his witness. So Dr. Chi will have his own examination in chief. Then Reno can ask uh, the, the, the Dr. Chi witness. This is called cross-examination. Then Reno sit down. Then uh, Dr. Chi ask again his own witness. This is called re-examination. That's it. So what, what does it mean here? The adverse party in the first proceeding had the right opportunity to cross. Means uh, because this witness is not coming. Uh, if in the first round, they don't have the opportunity to challenge this witness, uh, then isn't it very unfair when go to the second court, uh, they should already admit this evidence. It's very unfair. Uh. So therefore, the law is you must give the opportunity at least one time or first time for them to cross. Then only in the second court, they can accept it. Okay? Then the question in issue was substantially the same. So this one also leave if for you guys to discuss or whether it's the same on the facts or not. Oh, Angeline. Yeah, I think I answered your friend already. Ask your friend why so late. Okay. So shall we, shall we? Okay, so that's about it uh, for, for, for part C. Can we go to 5A? Hmm, 5 a.m. If I'm not mistaken, this is for case law as well. Lah. But yeah, let me check. Lah. 5 5A, 5A. Yes, okay, 5A, according to my own answer, uh, is section 51 CPC and also Naji case. Yeah, I think you guys will feel short because we are studying evidence. Uh, how can Najib and section 51 suddenly appear? Uh? Okay, let us go through these questions. Uh. C is charged for corruption under MACC Act. The court has found the prosecution has made up prima facie case and called for his defense. C has now sought for an order pursuant to Section 51 CPC for the prosecution to supply statement recorded for witness of the prosecution offered to the defense. The prosecution is objecting to the application on the grounds that the witness statement are confidential communication to MACC officer and are privileged. Okay. Advice C on his application in the light of the prosecution objection by reference to the evidence act. Okay, so is this about Tio Hok Chiu, Hok Chai, and Adula Zawawi? Um, 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 let me think. Ah, uh, if I think if, okay, like I say, every time we will start to answer based on the syllabus first, uh, whatever knowledge you have, we use your knowledge to answer. Let me think whether we can try what our key friends say. Mm. 
Atula Zawawi and Teo Ho Chi. I don't know whether I got Teo Ho Chi or not. Let me see. Ah, I got. Okay, I agree with our Keith. Thank you, Keith. So Keith was saying, these kind of questions are, is because uh, when you feel to call certain witness, uh, is it okay? Uh? Can we say there is an ever inference against the prosecution where they feel to call or feel to provide this uh, witness statement? So um, just sharing in case anybody don't understand what is ever inference. Uh, ever inference means uh, when I sue Dr. Chi, for, for my tuition fee. Then Dr. Chi said, isn't it the other day I pay you already? Then I said, please show me the receipt. But Dr. Chi couldn't produce. So when Dr. Chi said got receipt but couldn't produce, uh, the court will, uh, what we call, have an ever influence against Dr. Chi. Maybe Dr. Chi is lying. Because when you say God, but you cannot produce, uh, so this is ever influence. So apply this thing to our questions, uh, when the C as the accused asking for a copy of the statement, but uh, PP refused to produce, uh, can we say this is uh, ever inference? So to see whether it's ever difference or not, let us go to the requirement uh, one by one. So we can only say it's an ever inference is the court may presume the existing of any fact that is likely to have happened regards being have to the common cause of nature, human conduct, public, private, blah, blah, blah. Very complicated, right? Never mind. Can we also go to illustration G? Evidence which could be produced and is not produced would, if produced, be unfavorable to the person who withhold it, then adverse inference may be drawn. So translate to a layman language means that, uh, you can take, but you don't take. You don't take, then I will assume you are a bad person. Okay. So the question now is can the evidence be produced or not? And whether it's unfavorable or not. So when we back to the questions, uh, I think they can produce uh, because the, the winner is with them, uh, the statement is with them. Uh, so I think number one is satisfied. But how about number two? Unfavorable. Do we know what kind of content we have in the statement? Actually, we don't. Know. So, but arguable. Let us look at how many marks are. 10 marks. But again, when we are not sure, then you can use the magic word. Like assuming. Assuming is unfavorable. Then uh, the court may draw ever inference. Assuming this is not unfavorable, then the court cannot draw ever inference. Something like that. Like. So this is our key friend suggest answer we can argue la. I, I agree thanks our key friend uh yeah and then our keep also mentioned we can use this Teo Ho Chiu Teo Ho Chai you know which means uh, the court cannot draw ever inference where actually the prosecution will not create a serious gap how to say serious gap uh? for example when I say um Okay, we use the same example as I say me and Dr. Chi. La. I say Dr. Chi owe me tuition fee. Dr. Chi say he pay me on 4th June. 4th June, okay? Then I ask Dr. Chi to show receipt. Dr. Chi say I don't want. But then, although Dr. Chi don't want to show the receipt, ah, but Dr. Chi produced his bank statement. So the bank statement can also prove this. Ma. So it will be good enough already. So in that case, ah, there is no serious gap, which means... Although Dr. Chi didn't produce the receipt, but he used other method to prove the same thing. So this is acceptable. Once this is acceptable, uh, then you cannot uh, use Edward inference with really. it. Understand? Okay. And then... Hudi. Hudi and Siti Aisha. Okay. I think this Z, Hudi and Aisha. Thanks for your highlighting. But Hudi and Sha, uh, Siti Aisha, actually that one is for criminal. Since you mentioned, let us go to our city Aisha and, and Udi. Mm -hmm. Okay, here. So basically, like our Z, I, I don't know he, he or she full name. La. Why she mentioned about Udi, uh, which is here, uh, and city Aisha, uh, is because uh, memang, memang we are in CPC syllabus. Uh, in Udi case, uh, 
1979 uh, a statement made by police is a privilege that time uh, 1979 uh, there is no democracy yet uh. but now 2019 we change government already then they say no Sec uh, one section 112 statement is not privileged anymore so yes thanks for highlighting also both answer i can accept let me see uh, section 62 macc relevant here and link one in case um Actually, I don't think so. La. I, okay, although I don't know what is section 62 to MACC, ah, but I think the way uh, the when you mention Ling Guan Ying ah, is because of the passive questions. The passive question do have the MACC as, uh, versus Ling Guan Ying is about that one. Uh, just briefly tell you about what happened. Ah. So basically, when the prosecution sue you as an accused in court ah, by right, the burden is on the prosecution to prove your, your QT. However, MACC have a section to say that reverse the burden. The burden is on you to prove you don't, you don't have any last one case, you don't accept any bribe, which means uh, MACC the ballot, the, 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 the burden. That case happened in Ling Guan But then, if I'm not mistaken, at the end, federal court says MACC is constitution. Therefore, they can have such an act, they can reverse the burden, that one is fine. But then, Angeline, to answer your question, uh, when we look at the questions, uh, I don't see the reverse burden thing. Uh. They basically just say, I want, as an accused, I want a copy. Can you give me a copy? They didn't talk about the burden, uh, so I don't think it's relevant here. Uh. So I hope they answered you. Hmm. So Keith, okay, but now GK says section 112 is privileged and the accused is not entitled. Okay, Lee. Um, thanks for highlighting. I, as I mentioned um, at the first place, this is about Najib case. But honestly, I forgot Najib case say why already because too many Najib case already. Let us see now. Huh? So Najib case say he privileged. Now, see, the first question already asked whether the document sought was privileged were otherwise relevant to the issue at trial. Let me highlight first. Let me see. Uh. Actually, we in Malaysia, uh, we are very convenient because unlike in UK, uh, the judge uh, even will highlight to you, this is a summary of that. Uh, but then, um, who is that? Uh, Lee, right? You say the court held section 112 is privileged, the accused is not entitled. I don't think so. La. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. The court actually say, I don't give you it's not because you are not entitled. I don't give you, it's because it's not relevant. So I don't need to give you. Then the document sought was irrelevant and consequently not necessary or desirable for the trial. So this is what they say. So basically they didn't say can or cannot. They just say nothing irrelevant, don't ask. Right? Okay. Did I miss anybody question? If yes, please ask again. I think I answer everybody questions. So basically this is, okay, let us repeat. So for this kind of question, we can use our key suggestion to you as word inference to say that when the prosecution refused to produce, it may ask the court to draw ever inference, number one. And then also discuss the Dio Hock Chai, whether uh, that it will create serious gap or not. If yes, then ever inference will be drawn. If no, no ever inference will be drawn. And also our friend, who is our friend again, uh, uh, talk about city, Zep. Alternatively, we can also talk about Husti and Siti Aisha to say that um, state, uh, Hudi say 112 statement is privileged. However, Siti Aisha say 112 statement is not privileged. However, my opinion is that this is about criminal, ma, but we are we are sitting as them for evidence. Ma. So if can, I think we better use keep argument if can, but not to say right or wrong. La. We do see before examiner ask about other subject into different subject, right? So I think I see one more question. So if relevant based on city Aisha case, then the accused is entitled. Yes, answer to Lee is yes. Yes, if if we use city Aisha, actually we can ask for a copy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, silent five seconds, then we proceed. One, two, three, four, five, okay. Okay, right. I don't see any question now, right? Okay. So, B. Uh, see, five seconds, we got one, two, 
So we should argue Gusti then Siti Aisha then Najib correct. Okay lah, can lah. Uh, this me like I say can, but then I personally don't encourage because Siti and also Gusti is a CBC syllabus man. I personally don't encourage lah. But of course, it's a nice answer lah. Honestly, I would say actually better than ever's inference lah. But up to you guys. I'm not the one who's sitting for the exam. The choice is on you. Okay, okay. Should we start with section 76? Oh, what is section 76? Ah? Certified copy of public documents. Ah? You, are you mentioning 76 of the evidence? Eh? Oh, 76. Ah? Wait, ah. I am, I am not a superman, ah, but you give me a moment. Ah. If I'm not mistaken, 76 is under documentary evidence. I don't think so, lah, because we are only required to write 76 where you cannot produce primary and also you want to rely on certified true copy by the public officer. But on the facts, they don't even want to give you a copy, what? So nothing to do with seventy six, man. You 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 get what I mean? We okay, okay, good. Thanks, thanks. Okay, let me close. Ah, uh, we have too many things already. This one also I say. Do do you guys need this uh magic case or you are uh, lazy to read the whole judgment? Actually, you just remember this document sort of irrelevant will do. Do you guys need this? Case Najik case applies to the uh, I'm not sure. Eh. Let me open and see. Ah, uh. give me a open. Ah, uh. mm -hmm. I don't think so. Hey, yeah, oh, okay. You are very smart. Ah, uh. who is this? Ah, uh? yeah, Najib actually they do mention about Pusti. Okay, I share the group to the I mean, share the keys to the group. Ah, uh. just give me a moment. Uh. Like I say, I am not very good in multitasking. Is it necessary to go in depth about Najib case? Okay, I honestly think it's not necessary lah because first, we will never read all the case law. Second, do you know how many Najib case we have and how many pages we have? Ah? This one, I think it's a shorter one. Najib case is only 30 pages. But usually, ah, Najib cases ah, can go up to 100 pages. You know? So, I honestly think we don't need to go into detail. Lah. Rather, we spend time in using our basic understanding like uh, Keith and uh, Zach or Lee, whoever highlight those points, I think it's more useful, lah, honestly. Okay. Then shall we? So this question. Wait, uh, let me have a look. Uh. Mm. Okay. Yes, Max Ching. You were late. Okay. For this uh, 5B, uh, uh, honestly, uh, I answer wrongly until one of my students uh, who, who attend his past year and then enlightened me. At first, I thought this is uh, this 5B is a discovery of facts. Why? Eh? Because, you see, uh, they discover a pack of uh, what a uh, pack of drugs, and then they tell you where to find, and then later on they deny. So then I focus the point on whether this is a discovery of fact, whether this is confession or not. At first, lah, yeah, Lee, you are very smart. This Lee, uh, yeah, like you pointed out, is is impeachment. Why ah? Uh? Because when at first I ask you, you say a a a b b c c c. But when go to court, then suddenly you say, no, 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 no. So this is actually is an impeachment. Yes. But then, interesting thing is that, uh, uh, who is the accused in this case? Uh? Who is the accused? Uh? Lee, Lee, come try, Lee. Lee, we were waiting you. Come, come. You tell me it's impeachment already, then you should be able to tell me who is the accused in this case. Shall, 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 shall I with you? Okay. 
So the accused here is C, which is the girlfriend. So Undi is the witness, ma. I don't know whether you guys know or not. Actually, the accused can never be impeached because of our uh, CPC. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's 113, sub 3 or sub 2. Lah, okay? So, uh, see, she answered already. Yeah. Ting. Ting shock. Yes, impeachment is only for winners. Yes, thank you. So, I think there is a passing question. Actually, they asked about impeachment on accused. And then, actually, the true answer is you cannot impeach for accused. But I have many students who did a mistake for that question. Sir. But in this case, actually, also quite misleading because uh, they say the boyfriend is the witness, the girlfriend is the accused. So technically, you can impeach the boyfriend because boyfriend is a witness only. Ma. So then, yes, the answer actually is impeachment when you change your answer. So since you guys know already, then can we should we go to briefly talk about our impeachment? Uh? Okay, so for impeachment, uh, first, you need to cite 155 and 145. Why? Because 155 is the situation where you can impeach them. Number one, testify, believe he is unworthy of trading. Number two, he has been brightened. Number three, inconsistent with the previous statement. Based on my past experience, I can tell you 99.99%, they always ask about number three, which is inconsistent part. But then if this year is 0.01%, then it's not my fault, okay? So once you prove it's an inconsistent statement already, then you need to go to 145, which is whether this is inconsistent with the previous written statement or inconsistent with the previous oral statement. So on the case, I think it's an oral statement, but whatsoever, written or oral, or you can use 145. So on the facts, I think this is inconsistent. Therefore, we go to the... Procedure. So procedure, you must find out whether it's a final, apparent, serious, or material discrepancy. So on the spec, I think it's a material discrepancy. Therefore, we proceed. Then the court will give the chance to ask the witness, did you make the statement or not? If he denied, then the matter drop. Or the prosecution must prove the witness made the statement inconsistent. Or if he admit the statement, then the court will ask him to give explanation. If satisfied, Okay, nice, accept your credit sick. If cannot, your credit is doubtful. So the court at the end will give an impeachment order. Dun, that's it. Very simple, right? Let me see how many marks are. 15 marks. So I think, okay, okay, lah, right? Right, right. Okay, no, no, no check box. I think it's fine. Lah. Then, okay, number six. I believe nobody can answer number six. Lah or include myself so I cannot answer. Um, yeah. So for this kind of question, uh, can I give it to the last question? Because uh, honestly speaking, if the same question come out in the exam, uh, I don't encourage you guys to do, and this is definitely not in the syllabus. So I will do it in the last. Okay. And last question, 7A. Admissibility or WhatsApp? Okay, sorry, I see a question. Sir. As far as I know, document is not proper evidence until it is proven. Okay, my, my friend Kim, you are... Oh, ID document, sorry, I, I mislook. ID document is not a proper evidence until it is proven. Um, Something like that, something like that. But like I say, we will leave it to the last question. Why? Uh, because I don't want to waste everybody's time. When the last question, whoever want to learn about this, not in the syllabus, only you stay. Whoever don't want to learn, then just leave. Because I don't want to confuse you. Because uh, I, I do understand the feeling that now it's like less than one month. Uh, if I teach something very new, uh, you guys will feel panic. So I don't want you to feel panic at that. Okay. So can we go to this? What's set? I think this one, we, 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 we did a similar question just now, uh, the photograph one. Uh. So since our Keith, uh, Z, uh, Y, uh, Lee are uh, so active, uh, can you guys tell me what is the answer for this? Since we discussed this now, it's the same thing. Admissibility, admissibility. Uh, so fast, uh. section 90 uh, yes, very good. Very good. So I just quickly tell, uh, section 90A requirement is number one, produced by computer. Yes, what's that? 
Number two, in the ordinary cost of use. Ordinary cost of use can be proved by two methods. One, certificate before or after control the computer. Number two, oral evidence. So, who don't either come to court and give to say this is ordinary use or who don't sign a certificate. Okay. Five marks. Very simple, right? Ah, Mo Yi Chang. Yes, very good. Very good. Ah, so, five marks. We can score already. Number two, admissibility of no contra notes. Admissibility again, guys. No admissibility. Admissibility. Come, whoever just now answers your question like A1, come, do me a flavor. Tell me again. Ah, we see your answer. Okay, Zach and Lee say it's section 30. Oh, 32A is it's not correct. Eh? That one is line declaration. Eh? I don't know, you are typo or what? Eh? Ah, okay, you are typo, you correct already. Very good. But don't, don't make this mistake in the exam. Ah. Okay, uh, Z, I want to correct you. Actually, it should be 32 sub 1B. It's not 32B. But congratulations, you guys. You are a step, a step closer to a successful. So yes, the answer should be 32 sub 1B or section 73 capital A. Why? Because uh, section 32 sub 1B is for ordinary business, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, ordinary cost of business. So what is that? Means all exception under section, section 32 uh, is the maker cannot come. Uh, either Marty already, either uh, not capable to come to court or, or too expensive to ask them to come to court. So number one requirement in the order, in the ordinary cost of business, I think this is undeniable. Uh, they are doing business what, right? Number two, the maker is based on the personal knowledge of his maker. Sorry, the statement is made based on the personal knowledge of the maker. It means uh, whoever prepared this contra notes must have personal knowledge. Uh. Okay, again, I want to ask Dr. Chi help. So today, I sell my notes to Dr. Chi. When I sell my notes, I know my notes. Also, I have personal knowledge. So this Evidence is admissible under section 32, sub 1B. But on the other hand, if today I am not free, my girlfriend helped me sell to Dr. Chi, but my girlfriend no law, don't know law, nothing at all. So when my girlfriend sell to Dr. Chi, so when go to court, uh, my girlfriend is the witness, right? But my girlfriend doesn't have the knowledge about the, the, the notes, uh, the content, uh, and also don't know how many subjects Dr. Chi is purchasing. Uh, then this section 32, sub 1B cannot use. However, however, the law is a way come after however. So the however is, okay, put in simple way. La, section 32 sub 1B cannot recognize multiple hearsay. Ah. Multiple hearsay means ah, I tell my girlfriend, my girlfriend tell Dr. Chi, this one cannot. So 32 sub 1B cannot. However, our section 72 capital, uh, section, section 73 capital A recognize multiple hearsay because let me go through one by one with you. Number one, section 73A only apply to civil action. Satisfied. Number two, the maker must have personal knowledge. Okay, so if you've got personal knowledge, pass. If you don't have personal knowledge, never mind. If the maker had no personal knowledge, the information must be supplied to him by a person who has personal knowledge. So I use the same example. My girlfriend don't know CLP, never mind. I supply to him, I have personal knowledge. Okay. Number two, the question... The document in question form part of the continuous record. Yes, I continuously doing my notes or they continuously doing the contra notes. It's part of their job. They're just recording. Number three, such statement was made in the performance of the duty of record. So it's like my duty is to record. Then this kind of evidence, although don't have personal knowledge, is fine. So apply back to these questions are whether you need to apply section 32 sub 1b or section 73 capital A, it depends on whether there is a personal knowledge or there is a multiple hearsay. I not so complicated, right? I see our Dr. Chi is nodding his head. Lah. I assume he understand. Okay, so our friend asked question A, can we use funny seven case? Mm, actually, I don't know about this case, but maybe you can share to me about what is this case. Huh? Can we discuss section 73A directly instead of applying section 32 sub 1B? Okay, to answer whether we need to 
mention two exception or one exception, like I say, depends on the mark and depends on the facts. If the facts already tell you it's a multiple hearsay, then of course you should have use section 73A. La. But if the question only tell you one hand and now it's worth eight marks, then in order to show you are smarter than others, you know a lot of law, then of course you advise two exceptions. La. You get what I mean? This uh, in Fumalini, I don't know, sorry, I, I don't know how to pronounce your name, sorry. So yeah, let me know if you understand what I'm saying. Basically, I'm saying to determine whether you need to write both sections or one section, number one, depends on the facts. Number two, depends on the marks. My personal opinion, if I'm not mistaken, you write two because this is eight marks. If you only write one, it's not good enough to impress the examiner. Okay, right? So I think I answered all questions already. Oh. If cannot admit under section 90A, can admit under other exception here, for example, 73A. Um, okay, if the case is mentioned about you cannot use 90A, then you use 73A. Uh, if, if the case is so, uh, I don't think you need to mention that. Like I say, this question, we can show away use section 32, sub 1B and like the, uh, section 73A already. So I don't see the necessity to mention 90A in this case. Uh. There is no connection relevancy. Okay. So number C. This is for question A. Oh, I see. Can also lie about five months. I think can. Uh. But not so relevant. Uh. Instead of uh, mention about that case, uh, I will advise you why might as well you mention section 62 explanation three. I think that one will be more useful. Why? Uh? Because section 62 explanation three says that. Document printed out by computer is considered as a primary evidence. So WhatsApp message print out, screenshot printed out by computer is a primary evidence already. So it's straight away admissible under the court as a documentary evidence, primary evidence. I would I think it's better. Lah. Okay, okay. Uh change your name here. Can you understand? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So C. Whether Sally can be called to give evidence on the invoice. If I'm not mistaken, Sally is the wife. La. If I'm not mistaken, la. let me see. Ah, ah divorce already. So, divorce already. Once they mention divorce, ah, children, ah, or lawyer, ah, all this thing, ah, all this person, ah, you must mention about one chapter. Competency and compatibility. So what does it mean? Okay, let me show you how the wording shows. Uh. Maybe my English pronunciation is not so good. Uh, because I'm, my, my students always complain. They say they don't understand. Okay, now, this is how the wording right. Uh. Competence and compatibility. Uh. Competence means, do I have the capacity to give evidence? Compatibility means, can I compel you to give evidence? Meaning what? Me and Dr. Chi is a normal person. So everybody, whoever can understand the question, can answer the questions, uh, is presumable you are compet uh, competent to give evidence, regardless whether you are you are uh, what we call uh, mental disorder. Mental disorder person also can give evidence, uh, by the way, because the test is whether you can understand the question or not, whether you can answer the question or not. So, once you are competent, uh, which means you can answer the questions, uh, you are comparable to give evidence. So this should be your first part. So although you are wife, but you can understand the question, then you must come to court and give evidence. This is the law. So the law you can cite is section 120. Eh? 120 same. Uh, husband and wife are the competent witness. Uh, okay. Yeah, very good. Matt Rinto privilege. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So, but uh, this is general rule first. Uh, like I said, this is seven marks. Ma. Seven marks, then you must mention general rule and exceptions. Ma. So general rule is, uh, yeah, wife can give evidence, section 120. Then only we talk about privilege, which is communication between marriage, uh, during marriage uh, is a uh, privilege you cannot disclose. But then, but then, but then, I, I know you guys know about the chapter already. Very good. But don't forget, uh, I was already. So I don't see any question to determine a uh, particular time when the statement was made during marriage, but now I was already whether can call or not. Uh. 
I will leave it to you guys to discuss whether your opinion think that once the communication was made during marriage, although divorce later, still protect by privilege, this is number one. Number two, once divorce already, this privilege is no longer at sea. This is number two. So up to you guys to, to, to discuss. I don't see any case law say number two or number one. Understand? So, and the privilege continue even after the end of marriage. Okay, our key friend, thanks for highlighting. Do you have any case to support it? We are, we all are lawyer or lawyer to be. Uh, whatever we say must support by law. Uh, because even you go to the court, uh, the court will ask you, where is that? I mean, I couldn't before. Uh. Okay, he mentioned about goals. Uh. Okay, my goals, I think goals actually mentioned quite a lot of things. Uh, but my case didn't mention that. Uh. But thanks for highlighting. Maybe you guys, if you want, you can share this part. Mention about what you say in the group so everybody can learn something. Okay? Please, please. Okay. Can we go to the last questions? Whether Banks is able to object to his email which Shanti and Cole intends to produce at the trial. Okay, this is another category I mentioned, no? which is uh, because Shanti and Cole is a law firm. Uh, so we need to mention competence and compatibility, which is once the lawyer able to answer the question, then he is a competent witness. So when he is a competent witness, then you need to answer section 126, whether the communication between lawyer and client can be disclosed or not. That's it. So we settle our case already. I think this question also you must do. This question is very simple. Burden of proof definitely have one. This admissibility of the, of the evidence also got one. I think you should. What is the answer for C? Ah? For C is uh, 120. Evidence set, which is competent witness for husband and wife. Okay, this is first part. And then number two, uh, second part, a section is 122. Maybe, oh, so it's period or not. This one you need to ask your friend and colleague to share the uh, the, the, the answer because they say there's a case to say ma, even divorce already, the communication is still protected by privilege, ma. But I don't have the case. Ah. So ask your friend to share share to you. Lo. Okay. Okay, okay. So can we have like a 15 minute question QA time? Then I will I will discuss the last question for question six. Whoever don't want to learn about question six can leave us. Don't be shy. I think you, it will be better if you guys want to use your voice to talk. I mean, if you don't want to show your face, it's fine, lah, but you can use your voice to talk lah, to ask me the question. 15 minutes, ah, 15 minutes, ah, guys. 15 minutes. Ah. Yeah, you see number one. Please ask question with Mike. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chi. Okay, the case is Ibrahim Dao, is it? Uh, change your name. Ibrahim Dao is for which questions? Uh? Because I don't think I know this Ibrahim Dao. Let me search. Uh, Ibrahim. Ibrahim, Ibrahim. I only see Anhua, An status leave Anhua Ibrahim. I don't see Ibrahim, I Ibrahim Dao. Can you highlight, uh, can you enlighten us? Sorry, uh, Mr. Reynolds, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Reynolds, I think the, the case of girls just now I mentioned is about, uh, I think it ties back to the time when they make the communication is at their mm -hmm. it, during their marriage, their course of marriage, so that mm -hmm. the communication made between the wife and the husband will be protected by privilege according to the case. So mm -hmm. I am not thinking about uh, the reason why I say even after the end of the marriage, because um, you see at the time when they make the communication mm -hmm. during their marriage, but however, when the divorce, right, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't anywhere or any way to affect the validity of the statement because this goes back on what time or which point of time they make the statement. Uh, I would say, I would think in this way. Mm -hmm. Very good argument. Thanks, Keith. Like I said, I don't have any opinion towards whether you are saying the number one position I mentioned or number two. I, I'm okay, totally okay with that. But like I said, because I don't have any case law to support uh, as a 
prudence and responsible lawyer, we always must support by case law. Uh, uh, like I said, you can go ahead with your understanding, your opinion. I don't think it will fail you. It's your answer, it's your opinion. Don't worry. As long as there is no case law, say otherwise. Because uh, if you say something is against the case law, then definitely cannot. But I don't see any case law. Even just like I checked BAC book, I don't see them mention that part, lah, which is like even cover after the marriage. But if you say the lawyer and client, uh, the, 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 the privilege, uh, is it continue after the, the contract? Uh, I got a case for that. Let me see. Uh. Now, this case. Privilege apply only to communication between solicitor and the client, and the communication remains privileged even after the death of the client, which means I have the case for section 126, but I don't have the case for 122. So like I say, I, I don't support or don't uh, against any, any answer for that, don't worry. So what is the answer for 70 again? What is the bridge answer? Didn't catch that. 70, yeah. 70 is uh, 126, oh? 126 the client privilege, oh? which means you can only, um, the lawyer can only produce the communication between lawyer and client where the client gives the consent. Oh? For section 54 sub 2, reading together with the explanations, section 55, which says that, Section 54, evidence may be given only for general reputation or general disposition. Does it mean that if the reputation or disposition given under Section 54 is a general one, then the back title will be in as well? Okay, let me answer our friend Su first. Ah. Actually, I quite sometimes didn't study for this silver character evidence already, but I try my best. Ah. If I answer wrongly, Dr. Chi, please help me. Ah. Okay, let me look at your questions again. Ah. Fifty four, fifty four is for this position. I Wait, ah, wait, ah, sorry, ah, you guys. I think um, to answer Su, ah, yeah, like Dr. Chi said, you must differentiate civil and criminal first because the wording, ah, deposition and general reputation, ah, if I'm not mistaken, is for silver, you know. But when you mention section 54, uh, section 54 is for criminal, you know. Uh, so they are different things. Uh. But I can share with you my general understanding for silver. Uh, if I still remember correctly, uh, like I said, it's too long, I didn't study that. Generally, like Dr. Chi said, silver and criminal, bad character is not admissible. Like I said, one, this case is this case, previous case is previous case. However, for civil case, general character is admissible where for examining your damages. So how to say, uh, for example, today I mistakenly uh, run into a car, so I caused injury to him. But when people sue me, uh, I'm still very lancy, I say. So how? Sue me, uh, I got insurance. If I, the way I acted like that, uh, then the court may consider my character and use section 55 or section 12, uh, if I'm not mistaken, to give a higher damages ask me to pay because general damages is controlled by the court. Or another very good example is defamation case because defamation, how much is the damages? It depends on your character. Uh. So in that case, character will be relevant to show damages for civil case. This is for civil case. But in answering what is that, what does it mean the general reputation and their positions are, means are, when you say a person who has a pattern of committing a crime, are, the so-called pattern are, is a general reputation of the position are, must be so special, cannot be general. Let's say, are, you say, 
Reno like to drink Coca Cola, so he like to wreck a girl. But Coca Cola and girl has nothing to do with this case, ma. So that must be very so special, uh, Unless, uh, let's say, I like to use Coca Cola to kill people. Yes, that one is not a general reputation. You, you get what I mean? Which means the character evidence is not. You cannot say, oh, he's a guy. He must be the guy. He must be the person who committed this offense. You cannot. So many guys out there. You understand? Okay, sorry. You let me know who you understand or not. Ah, then I see another question. Doctor, regarding question one, see evidence, I'm still concerned with the pandology working in government. Does it fall under a size and section 45? Okay, doctor, since he asked you, come. <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong. It's I could be wrong. For the pathologist, so section forty-five, he's asking. Uh, he said he still believes should Let's be section forty-five. Uh, pathology. But I agree with you, la, It's more on uh, the relevancy of the DNA rather than the opinion itself. You know, because opinion itself, usually you need to go to court and give it. It's not just by one piece of paper saying that this is Putin's DNA, you know. Yeah, let me uh, uh, explain again. Uh. Facts mean uh, whoever check will give you the same result. This is facts. Opinions means uh, today Reynolds say A, tomorrow doctor say C. Everybody give different answer, only we call opinion, you know. So I don't think this is opinion. Uh. I think you should discuss Kui Chang. Uh. Okay, so next question is unrelated, but when an objection to the book of proof is taken, is for the primary evidence, right? For example, the original was not tender, then they give secondary evidence. So the waiver is for when the primary evidence slash original was not tender. Um, I don't quite understand the questions, but if I'm not mistaken, you are referring to this one also like long time didn't ask already. Something like if you don't object means you accept something like that, right? Can you give me the section or something? Or maybe questions? It will be easier for me to answer what is the real question you're asking. 73 AA, yes, thank you. So if I'm not mistaken, one is for silver, one is for criminal. If you if you don't object, that means you are accepting, right? Ah. Okay, actually, not only for primary and secondary, uh, it means everything. Uh. But I think mostly, I think, uh, I, I personally don't do criminal case. Uh, I, do, I, I do civil case more. Uh. It's like, for example, by right, when you want to tender this report, you must use of, uh, original. When you want to ask the witness, you must ask the person to come. But when you use secondary and you use hearsay, uh, I, as the opening counsel, I never object. Ah. Then section 58 is for civil, means you don't object, you mean accept. 73 AA means criminal, you don't object, you accept. If, if I'm not mistaken, ah. like I said, I too long didn't study already. Oh, sorry, at the ballet. Oh, yeah, yeah, correct. 58 is for civil, 73 AA is for criminal. Okay, another one, CN1. Regarding question one, how we distinguish between co-accused and accomplished? Good question. Okay, who accused ah, like you say ma, called accused ma, so must be the, the case already sue him ma. But on the facts ah, at first they say jointly, jointly charged, right? Jointly charged ma. But he pleaded guilty and also turned into prosecution witness already ma. So which means he no longer is a co-accused ah. You can say, hey, he, joined, he, he jointly charged ma, so means he's a co-accused ma. But who accused can be means ah, DP versus A and B. A is accused, B is co-accused. But in this case, it's like separate case, ma, because they don't put together. Ma. So I don't think he is a co-accused. Ah. Some more they already mentioned, but he turned into prosecution witness. Ma. Okay? Then Angeline. So the objection must be taken if the secondary evidence is established. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You... Okay, for, for prosecution, definitely they, every time they will raise objection. Ah. But then the, the counsel must satisfy la, why you want to use secondary evidence. La. Let's say you say your, your original was, was destroyed. La. Let's say. La. So you want to use 65 sub 1C. Let's say. 
So then you must prove that the original is destroyed or lost, so cannot produce. So once you satisfy already, the court accept, then okay, no? the court will accept it under section 65, sub 1C, secondary evidence of, okay, Angeline, then Mei Hui. Evidence by handwriting expert can never be a conclusive evidence as per Muhammad Kasim. It goes to the weight instead of admissibility. I'm confused, quite confused on the admissibility of handwriting by the expert. Thank you. Okay. I think I, I, I haven't studied this case yet, lah, but uh, for Mei Hui, I think the answer is like this. They are saying handwriting is an opinion. Ma. Like I say, pe different people may have different opinions. Today, I say this handwriting belongs to Dr. Chi. Mr. A may say this is not belong to Dr. Chi. So, the law is that you cannot say just because Reynolds say it belongs to Dr. Chi. Mr. A say it's not belong to Dr. Chi. Therefore, since it's completing, both also I don't admit, cannot. Both you must admit, but just whether the court trust Reynolds more or trust Mr. A more is about the weight. Let the court decide. So, both is admissible. We cannot say because there is conflicting, therefore we don't admit both. We may admit both, but see whether you want to trust which one. This is what the case say. Based on what you say, I don't know about this case. Okay. For Lee, so that for silver and criminal, no objection means admissible. Um, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Like I say, I'm sorry guys, because this one not often come out in the exam, so I don't really study it. Still based on my five or six years ago memory, I think yes. Uh, fail to challenge is deemed as an acceptance. Uh, this time, I need to highlight one more case to you guys. Ayuromi, if you guys know about that case, cross-examination, which means uh, today, let's say uh, I, I start a case, I sue Dr. Chi. I ask Dr. Chi, have you paid Reno the tuition fee? So Dr. Chi don't want to answer. When he fail to answer, it means yes, he didn't pay Reno. Okay? Then after Lee is Jasmine. So question 1A, can I say when the question asks about credibility is same as relevancy? I think so, you can say that. But the main focus will be, uh, because credibility, I will more uh, prefer to answer about the corroboration la, because whether he can trust or not. La. But you can answer relevancy as well. La. Like I mentioned in the early, is section 10. Is relevant under section 10 for question 1a. This one, Ding say or done by conspirator. Okay. So, so are we good? Are we good? Ngam ngam, 15 minutes. So, can I assume whoever still here means you want to hear a uh, 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 Go to question six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yes, uh, okay. Let me continue. Okay. But again, uh, I, I want to mention, uh, if you guys don't understand, uh, don't force yourself. Uh, because um, like I say, it's not in the syllabus and it's the first time. It's really is the first time. Can you give the case of 126 again? Ah? You mean the, the, the communication remains privileged until after the, the, the contract, is it? I think I only show one case for 126 now. Okay, I will put this in the group. Ah. They add you. They added this in our outline after this paper, Angeline. Is it? Okay, never mind. We, like I say, we are lawyer. We talk about evidence. If whoever student raise about this, come, let us chat. So this is our LPQP outline 2023. Uh, let us see whether you are seeing the truth or not. If you are not, then you are not credible evidence, uh, credible witness uh, ID. Uh, yeah, ID got too many already. Never mind, we find other keyword. Ah. ID documents, maybe we try. No, I ah, don't have. Ah. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Ah. I don't think I don't think they are in the syllabus. Ah. 
But never mind, it doesn't matter. I can honestly tell you, uh, whoever went to the sections with LPQP, right? They claim they will only ask those in the syllabus, right? But then, actually, I, I tried to search before. Uh, I don't see those later cases. Uh, like, for example, the, the general paper, the questions are, uh, I, I don't see they come out. From, oh, yeah, thanks, Angeline. We found already. Okay, but never mind. Thanks for your highlighting. Uh. So, like I say, I'm not every time correct. But I guess I want to say, uh, they say they only ask in the syllabus. Uh, I think this statement is not true because, for example, the, the, the general paper we talk about, the Alibaba, Hassing Baga, that case uh, is, is the case I share in the book is Rajani, right? But when I try to search Rajani, I don't see a Rajani in there, you know? Okay. So let us go to our question six. So before we start, uh, I need to explain what does it mean ID. Uh? So actually ID means identification purpose. So for this one, uh, we, we maybe need to jump a little bit to lose of court. Can everybody get ready of their lose of court uh, and then flip to order 34? Order 34. Yeah, I think I download, download for you guys. Uh. Otherwise, some people couldn't find their book, right? Let me let me share. Uh, let me search the loose of code. Okay, let us go to order 34. So order 34, the title is pre-trial case management, which means before trial, what you need to do. So if you look at order 34, rule two, sub rule two, Okay, order the default root two sub root two sub D. So let me read out for you guys. Ah. The contents of the bundles of document referred to in paragraph sub paragraph C shall be agreed on between all the party so far as possible, and this bundle document shall be filed by the plaintiff and marked as part A. So what does it mean? Ah? Which means when you go to court, ah, you will got a lot of documentary evidence, right? So what is our practice is that I, as a plaintiff, I will give the defendant a copy of my documentary evidence. Defendant will give me their documentary evidence. We will mark in each other document. So for A means we all agree with the content and authenticity, which means we don't challenge this is for one. We don't challenge the content. We all okay with that. We, we call part A. But part B on the other hand means Authenticity is not disputed, but then the content are disputed, which means which mean, uh, we don't challenge the uh, authenticity. Maybe this is true, but the content itself, I want to argue. But if you are part C, means we are arguing on both. You, you get what I mean? So this is ABC. Okay, I, I think I saw a question, a uh, student asked, why we talk about rules of court, right? Yeah, like I said, this is for your understanding first. Uh, understanding first. Uh. Uh, I'm not really sure about criminal, but I don't think criminal we have this kind of rule. Uh. But let me explain why we need part A, part B, then why we got ID first. So, which means once I comment on the defendant document, defendant comment on my documents, we will have one part A, both party agreement. In this case, court will know part A, we are not disputing this evidence straight away can admit. Part B, we dispute about the content. Maybe we don't challenge about whether this is true or not, but then we challenge about the content. And then part C, we challenge about both. So now, why I talk about this? You see, uh, 
Part A definitely got no issue already lah. Whether the, the maker come or not, whether this is original also doesn't matter because we already accept it. Part B, maybe you still need to bring the original, the, the cert or whatsoever, the original. So the court can examine whether this is okay or not. Part C also. So does it mean when the evidence go to Part C, uh, can never be admitted? No. When go to court, when you categorize a Part C, uh, you still can persuade the court to categorize it and admit it. So the process, uh, when the court examine, uh, the court, if they say, I want to observe first, they will say ID, mark as ID. Huh? Okay. But if the court, after you explain, even though in Part C, uh, the court said, yeah, I do piasa lah, can accept lah, they will mark at P1, plaintiff number one. P2, which means this is the evidence plenty want to accept, we mark it as a bit. You understand? I mean, if Dr. Chi also cannot understand, then then jala You can understand, Dr. Chi? Can, 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 can. Uh, let me repeat, <laughs> uh, which means whenever before we go to court, we will ask the opponent to comment, opponent will comment us. So part A, no issue, settle. Part B, certain issue, but we can still argue. Part C, that's a problem. So in order to use Part C, then when we go to court, we need to persuade the court. And how to persuade the court, it depends your authenticity, your maker come or not, etc. So if the court accept, they will mark an SAP. SAP means like Lampiulana in Malay. So they say, okay, bagus, saya boleh terima SAP. But if they say, mm, tengok pun saya lah, nanti saya palu pagi tau, they will say ID, observation, identification. So this is why I come to here. So you guys can understand. So I believe Pimina is the same thing, although they don't state it in the CPC, or maybe I don't know. But like I say, I don't, I personally, I don't do criminal case. So I, I, I don't really know about what is the practice. Okay. So to answer this question, whether ID documents are admissible and form part of the evidence. Like I say, ID, it means identification purpose, observing, I'm observing only. So in that case, uh, you couldn't answer without case law one because there is a case law to tell you can or cannot. Okay. So now let me show you the case law. Uh. Mm. Where is the case? Uh? I'm not, not mistaken in this case. Let me share. Uh. Ah, yes, this this case. I think I highlighted somewhere. Okay, let me show you. Uh, ah, here. So, a document. So, basically, this is an appeal case. Lah. So, appeal case, the, the judge asks itself. I have to determine whether the learner SCJ, SCJ means section for judge, was right in referring to the ID document in arriving at her finding. The question arises is, was she allowed to do so? So let me jump to this highlighted part. Huh? A document marked as ID is not an SAP. Like I said, SAP means although part in part C, we challenge the content, we challenge the authenticity. However, after you convince the court, the court accept, we call SAP. So a document marked as ID is not an SAP and cannot be relied upon. Certain SAP which have been put in the course of this proceeding for identification but have not in fact have been proven as they should have been are accordingly not SAP in the strict sense. So which means uh, they make a difference between SAP and ID. ID is not evident yet. So based on this, uh, just based on this, uh, we can answer already. It's not admissible yet and it's not a part of evidence yet. Uh, okay. So a document marked as ID could not be evaluated or considered by the court and must disregard. Again, this is support to say that we cannot use uh, ID evidence. Uh, okay. First, first, any ID document until and unless they are specifically converted into proper SAP must be disregarded. Secondly, any oral testimony referred to the same ID document are equally to be disregarded. Why they say this? Uh, Okay, I see somebody is copying. Never mind. Let you guys copy first. Okay. Why they ask about this uh, is because happy they ask, man. 
is the effect of any oral testimony of a witness that is based on an ID document, a question of admissibility or weight. Means the document itself, uh, it already is an ID. Uh. Can a witness refer to this ID document or not? The answer is no. Eh? Here, same. Uh. Secondly, any oral testimony referred to the ID document are equally to be disregarded. So, which means, uh, if whatever the witness say is referred to the ID document, the ID document itself, I already don't believe us. Uh, Whatever you mention to the ID, you refer to the ID, I don't believe as well. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you talking to me? Uh, okay, if no, I will mute, yeah. Okay, yeah. So actually this case and this part is really clearly answered for our question six and uh, A and B already. And they also ask you whether it's admissibility or weight or not. I can tell you it's admissibility. Why? They already say, but I will disregard. Not unlike the question just now, one of the student asked me, uh, what she asked already? Uh, let me see, uh, I forgot already. Ah, she asked about the handwriting, ma. She say, ma, uh, if a handwriting by expert, and then two completing, then should be admissibility or weight, ma. So in that case, I, my answer to you is, is about weight because when two completing, both also we admit. But in this case, uh, the court registrar always say, I will disregard. I, I don't even want to look at it. You don't show me. I don't admit it. So this is about admissibility. They don't even consider it. They don't really take into account as well. Understand? Okay, we see one question here. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I assume the thank you is for this question, right? I, I don't know if the thank you is for what. Uh. Okay, and then last one. The audio recording. Actually, uh, this one, uh, I was trying search, 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 search really long. Uh, cannot find the answer, honestly. But then until just now, our friend, uh, who is that? Uh, Angeline, is it? Uh, Angeline, right? I think it's Angeline. Uh, never mind, uh, not important. Uh. Angeline. I think she highlighted they asked about the audience in the in the, in the what right? Yeah, ta -da, right. So yes, then only I know this part. This this thing is for our six C. But sorry guys, I haven't studied yet, so I haven't do my job, so I, I cannot teach you lah. In order not to mislead you, better let me study first. Then only we discuss about six C. Are, are we okay? Yeah, because because honestly, I don't know the answer. I try to search, but I cannot. Can you share this case? Of course. Let me share. Ah, wait, ah, wait, ah. Wait, ah, wait, ah. Okay. And also, Sue, can you briefly explain to the co-relationship between relevancy, admissibility, and weight? Do we have to away conclude each other with, with each? Okay. I. Honestly, thanks for these questions. Uh. Actually, relevancy, we also call question of facts. Admissibility, we also call question of law. So how to say that? Uh? For example, today I slept Dr. Chi. I slept and also with a book. I slept him, but the book, I, I didn't use my book to slap him. Do you think this book is relevant? Rather relevant or not, it depends on the facts. Uh. Why? But imagine today I use my book to slap him, then this book is relevant already. But today I use my hand to slap, then my book is not relevant. Which means, whether something is relevant or not, it depends on the situation, it depends on the facts. So this is called relevancy, question of facts. But the question of law on the other hand is that, if I use this book to slap Mr. Chi, the next question to be considered is, how are we going to admit this book? We need the hard copy, we need the photocopy, we need the photo of this book, Whatsoever. So this is question of law. Why? Because it's the law tell you how to bring this book. Uh, who is this? Uh? Can you understand? I, I don't know. Sue, right? Can you understand what I'm saying, Sue? You let me know. And then will the case given for this question be shared on the group? Yeah, I share it. Six C illegal and obtain evidence. Okay, change your name now, my let me read and then we discuss. Uh. Uh, because like I say I, I haven't read because I try to find. Audio recording, I thought they are related to the ID. I keep on finding, but I cannot find. And then, 
Angeline, please do correct me if I'm wrong. But if the relationship between relevancy and admissibility, that is the test for admissibility, relevancy, right? Once relevant, only admissibility. Yes, Angeline, you are right. Like I said, I slept with my left hand or right hand. This is relevant. It depends on the fact. Once I slept already, I go to court. How to admit my hand? This is question of law. I slept in. I, I used whatever matter to kill Dr. Chi. That one is question of law. How to admit my thing? Whether ask me to come, whether ask my photo, whether whatsoever. Lah. So this is a question of law. How to bring to the court? That one is question of law. Then, okay, so great. You understand. Lee, is all them recording sent as tech recording? Um, I think so. Lee, I am not very really sure. But I think it should be the same thing. But I think so, lah, but I'm not very really sure. So, but even when it is relevant, right, it is not always admissible. Yes, 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 relevant doesn't mean it's admissible. How to say, huh? for example, before I die, I say, Dr. Chi, yeah, somebody kill me, but when I pass away. But then Dr. Chi actually had not even speak proper English because he cannot answer. So, although it's relevant, but then it's not admissible because Dr. Chi cannot convey the message. So, it's not admissible, right? So, that one is full. Huh? So, yeah, let me know if you understand. And Keith, is audience recording fall under section 3C as a document? If I not be second, yes. I think yes. I think it's clearly stated in evidence set. Let me see. Uh, I think you guys ask too complicated already because when I cannot answer, I need to flick the book. Uh, means uh, it doesn't come out very often. But yeah, for Keith, yes, you are right. Documents include audience recording. If you refer to 3C or 3D, Okay. Are we good? Yeah, ngam ngam. Two hour and 30 minutes. See, our estimation is always so accurate. But it's okay, we have another eight hour, eight, eight minutes. Sorry, Mr. Nga. Yep. Yeah, so for the six A, uh, for the part of six A, right? I'm thinking about this way because um, the ID document, as what you say, is for someone, uh, is for someone to prove the evidential value, right? Evidential value, uh, how to say, ah? Uh? Because because uh, an ID document, as far as I know, is a uh, not prop, is not a proper evidence until someone has proven the value of the evidence should be the proper evidence. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking in this way, should we argue, uh, uh, firstly, I will start off with the ID document. What does it mean first? So later on, I will go on to the burden of proof. For someone has to prove the best burden of proof to prove the ID document is a proper document that only become admissible. Mm, okay. Any, any more? I think... I think that's all I can do because we are not told. Uh, uh, since this is a prosecution's case, so I will just wall up the <laughs> criminal standard of proof on who is, who is, uh, who lies the standard of proof on this case now because this is a prosecution's case. So the criminal standard of proof on the prosecution is on the beyond reasonable doubt. So I'm. This is how I structure my answers. Firstly, I start off with the definition of ID document. Then I go on to burden and the standard of proof. Is that okay? And also the, okay. Uh, some tips for you guys also. Uh, a ways read what the question is asking, you know. why This is why yesterday when one of the students asked question, I say I want to see the bottom part. Uh, you always must see how many marks we, we, uh, it works and also uh, what kind of question they are asking. Like for example, admissibility. So you should just purely on admissibility. So what you are saying is that per, other than answering what is ID, and you will also talk about uh, burden of proof and then standard of proof, right? I think you can write that since it's a seven marks because it's quite high, um, but not so relevant uh, by my, my personal opinion. Because uh, you, you may ask me, hey, Reno, I thought yesterday you say seven marks to 10 marks should be like, half a pages or, or one pages, but this doesn't apply to those like special question. What, what I mean special question means are uh, definitely not in the syllabus and it, it require a case to answer. Uh. You will notice when passing questions or all these kind of questions are, uh, 
they actually require you to write many short answer only. Like for example, what I highlighted, very short only, but then they can give you seven marks, 10 marks, 15 marks. So all these are questions that actually, they really is that simple. But the difficulty is during exam, if you are the student for last year, you have no idea about this case. So I would say this question is nobody can answer unless you write the LPQP officer. Otherwise, definitely you cannot answer one. But during exam, when you have no choice, uh, we have you can write all this. Uh. But if you ask me whether relevant or not, I don't think so. Uh. Not so relevant. Uh. Of course, like you said, you just wall up what you can. Uh. But my opinion is that might as well you do other questions which you fall, you feel more confident. Because this kind of question, uh, I think it's not good for you to take the risk, you know. I, I don't think even they pity you, they give you maximum five marks, maximum four marks. I don't think they will give you higher than that, you know. I, I think it's not worth it to, to say something is not relevant. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, but <clears throat> but um I mean I mean you are right on the point uh saying this is not worth for us to do, but <laughs> who knows? It it comes to this year question as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the question C? Because uh I'm thinking I'm thinking the audio recording uh on the police custody, so the information led by the police is provided in the section 27 evidence act, right? 27 discovery? Uh, I mean the information received by the police, by the police officer during the police investigation, which does not require for the voluntariness. Oh, let me, let me, Give me five seconds. Uh. If I understand you correctly, section 27 is the discovery of facts, right? It's uh, under compassion chapter, right? Yes. Then you are saying in order to use section 27, we are not required to show voluntariness, right? Yes. Therefore, we can admit this uh, audience recording because we... we, we, we... Because, yeah, because uh, section 17... Sub two defines the confession, and then the exception is provided under twenty four, like oppression, something like that. But when it comes to twenty seven, right, then the further exception to the exception again. Understand? Okay, I don't think it's section twenty seven is because ah uh, now they are not saying the police oppress or threaten the accused to say the statement. They are more like saying they got a recording that accused threatening the victim. You can only mention about section 27 is where the police use force on the witness, but on the facts it's not. Man. I see. You, you get what I mean? Yes. Uh, uh, so it's not 27. Yeah, because I'm thinking in practice, uh, I mean, this is my previous experience. Uh, no matter how many times you tender the audio recording, the opposing counsel sure will object uh -huh. on the... For sure, they will object because the first part is whether the, com the audio recording is complete or the quality of your recording. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is... So can we just straight away use the hearsay then inadmissible at all? I think you can. But because they give give him time marks, uh, my personal feeling, I think that is a case of this. To like like you say lah, definitely when the party who tender it will say it's admissible, it's relevant. But the other party will say, hey, not clear la, We don't know this voice la, You sure it's my client la, Etc. I believe that is a case to say how to admit. If want to admit, what is the requirement? But I haven't got the case yet. I, I tried to find, but I couldn't find. Uh, I think you can use that one, la, but still it's not the best answer I can see. La. Ah. I see. Okay, thank you. Ah. No problem. Let us see our... Can you please share the chat with us? Oh, sorry, cannot, bro. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, what was your share early for another subject which wasn't included in the outline? It is for GP. The answer is Tato Kana Galingan case. Did I another subject which is not in the outline? Which case are? Uh? Which case are? Uh? Everybody can highlight to me. Uh? Part C. Uh? 
Question one, part C. Uh, Angeling, are you referring to question one, part C or what? Uh? This question, 6C. What was it you shared early for another subject, which was not in the outline? Is it for GP? Which one? Uh? Sorry, I cannot recall it here. Can you give me more info? Okay, then how we go about answering part C? Okay, for part C, you guys give me some time. Let me figure it out and read, do some reading on the case law. Then I only come back to you because my understanding based on evidence, uh, I, I, my time, uh, maybe my time, uh, we don't have an audience recording and it's not part of the syllabus. So I, I honestly don't know how to answer, but I need some time to read the case law. Then we come back in the, in the what? Uh, Okay. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I think that's it. You have shared quite a lot of information to the students. Thank you so much, Reno. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, for you, have to, you, you have to own your computer for a while, you know, because the record itself will process, you know. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can click uh, stop recording and then subsequently the whole video will, will be recorded. Okay, let me see where is it. Uh, I don't know. But never mind. So shall we stop here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think can. I look forward.